Mouse Playground. Hooray! This is the Darren Harris Podcast. Here's your host, Darren Harris. Yo, what up, folks? Welcome back to the show. I'm Darren Harris, and this is the Darren Harris Program. Thanks for joining me this week. How you feeling? How was your week? Hopefully everybody had a good week. My week was pretty good. Not really eventful, but it was still good. My wife and I went out and looked for another motorhome. We're still looking for a home, so we uh, went out and did a little bit of shopping. But that is not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about something that is a lot more eventful and something that I think personally is absolutely wonderful and amazing. Today I'm talking about Beyonce and her debut into country music, the country music genre. It's her very first attempt in the genre, and she made history immediately, like instantly. What I'm talking about is she released a song. Actually, she released a teaser of a song on uh, when on the Super Bowl and one of the commercials, and it was just a teaser. And everybody was like, oh, wow, Up, and then nobody really heard anything about it for a couple of days. But then, a few days ago, Beyonce dropped the single that was featured that was featured on the Super Bowl, a song called Texas Hold'em. And... And I'm not a real big country fan, but I'm not, I don't hate it. But I got to tell you, for her first attempt, she knocked it out of the motherfucking park, man, because her debut, she debuted at number one on the country charts. And not only did she debut number one on the country charts, she also had another another cut off of the album. Um, something, uh, I forgot. 16 carriages or something like that i believe it's 16 carriages and it's more like it's more of a ballad but it debuted at number nine so she's got in her first time her first time in the genre her first time in the genre she has the number one song and the number nine song at the same time there's only one other person to do that in the in the country music genre and that is taylor swift She's the only other person to have two songs in the in the top ten in the country music genre. But Beyonce is unique in the respect that she's the first black woman to do it. And for that, I want to commend that girl. I want to commend that girl. But she has been getting some serious ass blowback from the country music well not really i won't say everybody but select people are just up at arms about it there was a story that i read where someone had requested beyonce's country song texas hold'em and their response to the person who requested the the radio station's response was we don't play we play country music we don't play beyonce well this is a country song but they still didn't play beyonce for they didn't play the request so they got some blowback and long story short they ended up you know retracting that statement and and basically made it seem like they didn't really have access to it and it was they followed the trends of larger markets well all the larger markets are 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 down with it but for some reason there are still some places that just want to huh they want to they want to keep their traditional country the way that it is, if you get my meaning. And what I mean by that is that country music has always been really good at like, like, like using black music, like having like, like using the influence of black music in country music, but they're just not, real big on on using black people or including black people in country music they're just not really good at it 
You know, there's a few black country artists out there, a few of them, and they still, they get ridiculed. They get ridiculed. But I think those days are over because the people in the genre, I think the most famous black country singer in the genre is Darius Rucker. But, I mean, his, I mean it, he pales in comparison to Beyonce, and I think there is a huge change that is about to happen in country music. And quite frankly, there are a lot of people who don't like it. One in particular was John Schneider. Now, I don't know if you guys know who John Schneider is, but I, used to, I grew up watching this guy on television. He is... Bo Duke. You know who Bo Duke is? Bo Duke is one half of the Duke boys from the Dukes of Hazard TV show. He's the blonde guy. But he also is a country music star or a country music singer. I wouldn't say he's like a star. He has like 18 albums, though. He has like 18 country albums. So after he stopped, you know, really like with the Dukes of Hazard, after he stopped that, he really kind of picked up and started doing music. He did music for a while. He still continued to act, and, and he's been on a lot of things, but some very obscure things. You know, nothing, I think he was in an episode of Glee, nothing really, really mainstream. He's been in a lot of B-type movies and TV shows and things of that nature, but he's still was a working actor. He's a working actor, and he still continues to make music. But he made some remarks about Beyonce's entrance into country music. I watched a an interview where he was some lady was interviewing him and she asked him what he thought about Beyonce and her country music endeavor. And he likened her to a dog. Oh, well, you know how these people are. They got to come over and mark their tor territory like like dogs in a dog park. Like, for real, bro? <laughs> that's that's crazy. Like, it really kind of hurt my feelings, too, because, I mean, when I was younger, when I was like, when I was younger, I used to watch the Dukes of Hazard before I realized what the fuck it was really about. But I used to watch the Dukes of Hazard. I mean, for real, the Deuce of Hazard, man, when I was a kid, I never wanted to be a redneck so bad in my life. They made that shit look cool. They made being a redneck look cool as fuck. I can't front. They really did. I had my little belt buckle and everything. But then I realized quickly what the fuck was going on with the General Lee and all that shit. And it really kind of, you know, it really kind of hurt my feelings because I did like the show. And I like those guys. I think his co-star was named Tom Wopat, Luke Duke. I like those guys. I thought it was I thought it was a fun show. But it wasn't. It really wasn't, not for a lot of people. And when I look back, I can I understand why. And also, I can kind of understand why this person would form these ideologies. And it's just not, it's just not, it's just not cool. It's not like something that, that is becoming of, of someone in that, like in that entertainment van. I mean, like he really kind of, I mean, he took the gloves off. He took the gloves straight off. I mean, he called her straight up, you know, he, I mean, he's short of calling her a dog, man. But I don't think she's phased by it. I'm going to tell you why she's not. I don't think she's phased because, number one, she's a billionaire and she don't really give a fuck about John Schneider. <laughs> but I don't think she cares because I think she's doing something greater. I think she's trying to bridge a gap. And that's what I really think that she's trying to do. I think Beyonce is trying to bridge a gap between two cultures. And 
I can't front, man. I think it's working because, like I said, a lot of people in the country music genre, you know, people that enjoy country music, they're they're hate, but a lot of the people aren't. There are a lot of people that are super supportive that are in the genre, especially the women, super supportive of Beyonce joining the ranks. And I got to say, I'm very impressed. And I think that it's the start of something that could be good for our country. Now, I said something about Taylor Swift a few weeks ago and, you know, her ability to, to, to appeal to a large audience of people. She is, well, Beyonce is the same type. She has the same type of, she moves the same way. You know, those two women right now, I mean, if they were to, if those two women were to get together and make a song, I think the entire world would stand up and listen. I think a lot of things would change. They are two women that could literally bridge the gap between us. Those two women could change history in our country if if they were to focus on that, if they were to focus on, hey, let's 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 put our heads together and try and bring our fan bases together. I mean, there's people who who love Beyonce. There's people who love Taylor Swift, but there's also people on both sides that don't know any anything about the other. And I think that would be a great opportunity for for you know, us to, to kind of move forward with this, at least in the musical genre, with all of this, all of this division to try to, to get by all of the divisiveness that, that is, that, that is between everybody. But there's some problems though. There's a lot of problems. And the problems are this, while Beyonce has entered the country music genre, and she's gotten a lot of pushback from a lot of people. There are countless white artists that have made their way into black music, and they have been welcomed. Some of them, you know, really welcomed. But they don't, they don't share the same sentiment for Beyonce. I don't. I just don't understand. I just don't understand why one of the top performers to ever perform, one of the top artists to ever be, I mean, I wonder why. But it's it's really quite obvious why. It really is obvious why. Country music has been gatekept. They have been gatekeeping country music forever. I mean, for, for forever. And the funny part to me about it is black people created country music. Create, country music is a derivative of the blues, which is was created by black people. As a matter of fact, most, most veins, most genres of music stem from black music. But nobody likes to admit that. Nobody likes to stand up in that. They always try to make it seem like we weren't as innovative as we were. That we didn't create the things that we created. They take, they take a lot of, I'm not, I'm just going to use the word they. But they take our names off of things that, that we've created. For instance, I'll give you a really good, soul food, Okay. Soul food is soul food. You know what soul food is? Collard greens, cornbread. It's not, it's, it's, it's soul food. But what they've done is they've changed it to country food. Because it's country food. No, it's soul food. It's soul food. That food has its origins with black people. But they won't give us that title. Unless it's us that's doing it. If I open this restaurant over here and I'm a black guy, right? I could call it soul food all day. 
But if I'm a white guy, I'm going to call it country food, even though it's soul food. And it's the same thing with, with the music. Little Nas X, he came out with Old Town Road, and it was a smashing success. And very briefly, it was on the country charts, but it was removed because they decided that it didn't fit the, the norm or the narrative of what country music is because it was basically 808s with rolling hi-hats, but it, it, we talked about the same stuff that, he, that, that, that country music does. Same thing. I'm riding my horse. I got my boots on. Same thing. And it was the same thing, but he was shunned away. He was shunned away. He was shunned away. And his song was taken down, but it charted. It still charted. It was number one for 19 weeks in a row. But still, country music refused to acknowledge that, which is almost kind of hypocritical because then you have country music. There is now country music and country music videos that are starting to resemble black music and black videos. It, it, I mean, if, if you don't believe me, dig into crates and watch. Jason Aldean, I did a podcast about his ass too. Jason Aldean, you know, he, he, he pretty much rapped on one of his songs for real. Uh, okay, if that's what you want to do, okay then. So if you could do that, then how come we can't? How come it's okay for everybody else to cross over into our genre, but it's not okay for us to cross over into their genre? I think Lenny Kravitz, Kravitz was successful, but there was a band called Wasp, which was an all-black uh, rock band, and there was another band called Living Color, and Living Color, and they were a good band, but they still they were a metal band. They but they still got some blowback, even though they were awesome because of the gatekeeping of heavy metal music. But they can insert vanilla vanilla ice into the mix, and everything is fine. Everything's supposed to be okay, and that just that to me just shows the lack of respect for our ingenuity, our creativity, and our contribution to music. They just shun that away. And they tried to use Vanilla Ice to basically say that we can do this also. Not until you got cats like Everlast and the Beastie Boys and Eminem. Those cats are legitimate rappers the beastie boys really kind of broke the whole mold for white guys in hip-hop really i mean then there was another group, group called third base you know mc search that that dude could rap you know what i'm saying and he's always gotten props as a white guy that could rap same thing with ad rock from the beastie boys and of course we know eminem everlast has gotten his props for for being a white dude that could rap but it's it. They're looked at as pioneers, you know, groundbreaking pioneers when they venture over onto this side or into this genre. But we are we are looked at as some as as people who are trying to copy or steal or 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 pollute that genre. The genre they want to keep it. They want to keep it pure. In other words, they want to keep it white. For lack of a better phrase. And that's the honest to God truth. That's exactly how I feel about it. They want to keep country music white, but it's hard. It's getting hard for them to do that because there are so many talented people of color that enjoy country music. And of course they go out and sing country songs and they're ridiculed and they're looked at and they continue on. There are several black women, country artists that have been country artists their entire careers, but you don't hear about them. You don't hear a lot about them. You don't hear a lot about them. But you're going to start hearing about them now thanks to Beyonce. She really did. She broke she broke 
that ceiling. She broke that ceiling, and not only did she break it, she broke the shit out of it till I don't think they're ever going to be able to put it back together in the way that it was because not only are you know are black people excited about it, but white country music, some people are excited about it because they're fans of Beyonce also. They like country music, but I think just about every woman in the world almost likes Beyonce. It's hard to not like her. And they're trying to say, oh, she's not country. Well, Beyonce's from Texas. She grew up in the country. They celebrate cowboy culture in her family. She is a country girl. She grew up in the country, right outside Houston. And and they so they need to stop when they're 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 talking about you know, she's not country or she doesn't know anything about the genre. I think she can sing and I think that it doesn't matter what genre she's in. I think that she can pull it off no matter what it is she does. Now, back to the Darren Harris Podcast. What's up, folks? Welcome back to the show. Today I'm talking about Beyonce and her her debut into country music. And the good, the bad, and the ugly of it. And I think I don't see any ugly, and I really don't see any bad. I I really see good, and I think that, man, I'm going to tell you what. Thank God for Beyonce country music because the genre itself was losing traction again. It, it creeped up a few years ago. It was doing really well a few years ago, but started sliding back down the ladder. And something like this, I mean, all of a sudden, Beyonce's song is being is is the number one country song in the in the in the land. From arguably the number one pop star, well, not R and B star, and you know, probably one of the top two pop stars, top three, if you count Rihanna, Taylor Swift. They're uh, they're. They're the heavy hitters out there. There's not a lot of billionaire chicks out there. But that's three of them right there. And they, I mean, it's 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 obvious how they got there is their talent and their, their business savvy. And their ability to make good decisions. Their ability to to appeal to to a broad audience. All three of them. Super broad. And those women are very capable of changing the world via music. If I mean, just think about that for a second. Just think about that for a second. If Taylor Swift and Beyonce made a song together. And then if you incorporated Carol G, his shit would be over. There wouldn't be, there wouldn't be anything anybody could do about it. I'll tell you what, men men would be real scarce. We better watch the fuck out. <laughs> because I'll tell you what, if them chicks get together, man, it could really it could really be like some significant change here. I mean, Taylor Swift, she told a bunch of people to go vote, and you know what they did? They got up and went and fucking voted. That's why people in the political in the political world they're very afraid of Taylor Swift they're afraid of this girl because of her reach same thing with Beyonce they actually have real reach they reach people for real you know people bump Beyonce when they breaking up with they they man or you know, for real, man, it's it, it it's it's really serious, and people don't really think it's that serious. Cause music is just pop, but people are influenced by these people. This chick could put a put a potato chip bag on her head, and tomorrow, every chick you see in the street will have a potato chip bag on her head. No bullshit. There's only a few women that can do that. I don't know. 
I just think that people are reacting to the wrong thing. I think they're concerned about the wrong thing. I mean, for crying out loud, nobody said shit when Andre 3000 came out with the flute album. Nobody said nothing. As a matter of fact, they said, good job. I mean, he got ridiculed in the hood and everything, but even still for a flute album, not bad. You know what I'm saying? And even the people in the, in the flute society, I guess, they embraced him. I thought it was awesome. Some people are going to be mad. Let those people be mad. Those people, you need people, you need haters, man. You need people to be mad. You need people to be mad. And it took a while. It took a few, it took a minute for people to get a hold of the story. CNN had it. A couple of the big news outlets had it. But, you know, it took a long time for the country music outlets to even advertise it. There was one. It was I, I had looked on Google for like three pages of Google before I found anything even related to Beyonce in, in the history that she made. During Black History Month, no less. She planned that shit. But she made history. And they didn't even put it up. They didn't they didn't even mention it. There was several different I mean, big publications, big major players in country nothing. Nothing about it. Not for a few days. I mean it's just it's just it's just ridiculous but like I said there are there are people who support her in the genre country singer Lainey Wilson as a matter of fact is one of them uh, there's a DJ Bobby Bones from iHeart Radio that that said that we all need to get down on our knees <laughs> And welcome, Beyonce. K. Michelle. Everybody in hip-hop. Everybody. The only people that are going to be mad are the racists. The uneducated people who think white people created country music. Those are the people that are going to be upset. In 2019, country music artists of color only made about 4% of the genre. 4%. 4%. That's not a lot of people, man. That's not a lot. That's not a lot of songs. Well, it's just not a lot of reach, not a lot of traction, probably not a lot of play. Probably doesn't even reach the audience that it's really intended for. Some people will play it, but other people will not play it because of what it is. They won't carry it because of what it is, who it's by. And I think that, I think is that is the most disgusting thing in the music business is the fact that that there that there 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 has to be racism, that there's racism. You know, people judge you by the type of music that you create. You are judged as an artist by the type of music that you create. I mean, even collaborations. There's some collaborations out there, you know, crossovers, and those were well-received, especially, you know, the men that do it. But the women, not at all. Not at all. And it's just, I don't know, for me, it's, it's just sad that there's so much ignorance out there that people can't take those goggles off for a second and enjoy a good song. I really enjoyed it. And like I said, I'm not a country music guy. I've never been a country music guy. I do like some country tunes, but I'm not a big country music person. But I think I will be now, thanks to Beyonce, and I want to thank her for that. 
If you haven't heard it, the song is called Texas Hold'em. It's fucking awesome. And she sounds wonderful. The track is amazing. And I wish her the best of luck in the genre. And we love you. And don't let them get to you. And keep grinding, girl. And anybody out there, any other, any other country artists of color, keep your nose to the grindstone. Do not let these people deter you. Okay? Stay the course. Buckle in for the duration. You'll get there. I want to thank everybody for joining me this week on my podcast. I want to thank my parents for being the best parents in the world. I want to thank my wife for being a great wife and a wonderful, wonderful friend. I want to thank my best friend and producer, Jesse Andel, for putting me up to this. I want to thank Gentry Thomas for giving me the platform to do my show on. And last but not least, I want to thank all my listeners out there, everybody who stuck with me and sticks with me, even through all my babbling and ADHD moments. So I, I definitely am appreciative to you, and I hope that you come back and join us next week when I don't know what I'll be talking about on the Darren Hatch program. I know I'll be talking about something, so I'll see you guys next week, okay? Peace. You've been listening to the Darren Harris Podcast. Subscribe to the show, give a good rating, and everything you need to know is at DarrenHarris.com.